I, I just think that if the way the system oppresses, for example, the black community um, with the you know murder rate, uh, black men being murdered by the police or other, uh, with uh, the poverty rate, uh, with the lack of job opportunity, like what type of psychological effects does that have on you know the black community on said uh, black person? I just think that in in the culture that's starting to recognize mental health more, mm -hmm. um, that needs to be a topic of discussion for the black community because it's just astonishing that black community, if they think this, that we can go through uh, you know slavery, hundreds of years of slavery, and people really don't understand that the conditions of slavery, like. It's just a surface level description. I'm kind of studying it now. And you would be uh, astonished by some of the things. But black people are supposed to go through that slavery of 100 years, then Jim Crow, then, you know, we really have the new Jim Crow, then, you know, then Reaganomics, um, you know, then cocaine pushed into our cities. Like, there has to be some sort of effect and as a side conversation, maybe since we just kind of keep moving on, maybe that plays into how white medicine believe we can just take this pain. You get what I'm saying? We just kind of just keep just keep going. So, but what are your thoughts on kind of all of all of that? I'll, I'll go back to uh, Margaret. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it has a variety of effects on us as individuals. People are angry or depressed or sad, or all of the above. I'll, I'll tell you about a, an ex, something I'm experiencing. I live in Harlem, mm. and I work in Brooklyn, and both the neighborhoods I'm in are gentrifying exponentially. Uh, to, be, to be blunt, both these neighborhoods are getting whiter and whiter and less and less black. Mm. And what does this do to me? So I complain about it. I uh, talk to people about it. But it makes me very angry. And people, you know, the variety of oppression, and that's people being displaced. That's like the, the pilgrims displacing the Indians, mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, so what do you do? Well, the problem is that no one gives us good guidance about what to do, about what action to take. And the things that we're exhorted to do, like voting, mm -hmm. well, just vote. All you have to do is vote. You know, get rid of Trump. If Trump is gone, Trump was horrible. And all you need to do is get rid of him and poof, everything will magically be better, except it's not. Um, so uh, the, uh, you know, the police still kill people. Mass incarceration system has um, not diminished uh, at all. Uh, people are getting poorer. You have people, half the unemployed people in the states, their govern governors decided you don't need the extra money. So people who are desperate, who are living on unemployment, who got this one-time benefit, are just being denied this money. And you know that, of course, Black people are uh, yes. uh, disproportionately affected by things like that. So we, we just, the beat down continues, but we are never told how to empower ourselves uh, as individuals and as a group. Uh, and I think that has to actually be a group effort for us to have a consensus about how to uh, face all of these uh, assaults on, um, on us as people. And the assault is, um, is uh, the contradictions are becoming more acute. Exactly. And, and what, what do you think about that? What are your thoughts on on any or all of that or, or whatever you want to contribute, uh, Justin? Yeah, I, just going back to what Margaret said about on the individual level, right? Obviously, there are systems that are in place that oppress us as a people, right? But when you, you know, break it down to the individual level and there's individual decisions being made, you know, millions of them every single day, billions of them every single day, that trauma and oppression is factoring into those decisions, right? They're factoring in how we speak to each other, how we um, act around each other. Uh, you know, like Margaret say, like like Margaret said, was saying, you know, it impacts how we're thinking about how we're even going to combat these issues, right? Where you have black pe people in the black community saying, "Oh, we should go out and vote for um, someone like Joe Biden," right? 
we're not even acknowledging all the trauma and oppression that Joe Biden and the Democrats Sad. have done to black people over the past 20, 25 years. Right. So when you don't actually acknowledge that trauma and oppression, you don't actually face it head on and speak and, and, and try and get past that or try and work through that. You end up 10, 15, 20 years down the line, keep repeating the same things over and over mm. that then reinforce that oppression back to the next generations. Right. So I feel like like Margaret was saying, we need to figure out a way as a community to to really come together to figure out a game plan on how, you know, whether we're talking about inside of uh, electoral politics or out how we're going to actually address the traumas that we have as a community, um, you know, and say, how are we going to get past this? How are we going to actually face this head on and not just keep taking this trauma and oppression, repackaging it? Um, even sometimes I think we, you know, take it and make it a part of our culture, make it kind of a cool thing, which right. then yeah. who who ends up taking that? The, the corporations, right? These right, people, right. Um, you know, the people that, take advantage of hip hop culture, black culture to then re repackage that and sell it back yeah. to us, which we end up buying. Right. So I think there's a whole <laughs> host of issues that we have to talk about, but it all starts with actually facing that trauma and oppression head on and being willing and able to speak out about it. Um, and, and even acknowledge that it exists so that in the future we can say, okay, we acknowledge this exists. This is an issue within our community. Okay, we're going to address this by doing X, Y, and Z. But if you don't, you can't even do X, Y, and Z if you don't, if you can't acknowledge um, that that is an issue and a trauma and oppression that is affecting us continuously to this day. Absolutely. Did you did you have something to add, Margaret? Or I, I was just thinking about something. You know, this has a very literal impact on us on our health. I mean, yeah. we know all, everything we've just talked about. Stress makes you sick. High blood pressure, broken mm -hmm. heart. I mean, it is called broken heart syndrome. This is a medical condition. Mm -hmm. um, all of these um, stressors on us take years off our lives, mm -hmm. make us more likely to, to suffer from things that are uh, preventable. So that just that came to me um, also. And, and, and just right off that, uh, you know, I think we downplay how much stress and anxiety plays into your health effects. You know, I don't even think we talk enough about that, how it can, you know, it's going to increase your heart rate if you're stressed and anxious, right? You're not going to be getting sleep. You're not going to have an appetite. You're not going to be eating. Right. 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 Or you're going to, or you're going to want to go out there and eat something that makes you feel good, which, right. well, then you're, when you're in a food desert shit, that's pretty much everything <laughs> around. Right. So these things compound on top of each other. Right. And we need to, you know, this is something that I want, to you know be an outspoken person within our community about and that's talking through your issues talking mm -hmm. about your issues to someone that you trust you know not just bearing it all and hiding it and acting like you're everything's fine you know because that takes a toll right that's a heavy burden to carry on your shoulders as well which is going to affect Absolutely. the decisions you're making you know when, it, when every single day so i it's think that's a also domino something. effect yeah it's just exactly. a domino, it's a domino effect, effect just a phenomenal effect. So that's kind of a good segue into one of the, another one of my questions, which is we're saying we have to talk about it. Does the black community or do black people as a whole, do black Americans understand that what's happening to them is oppression? Cause I feel like it feels like to me, like black people identify the issues. They don't understand that they're interconnected. You get what I'm saying? They don't get that underfunded schools, mass incarceration is connected. They don't get that the reason that black women find it a hard time to find a mate is because black men are in prison. Like it's all connected together. So it, that's my question to you. Do you feel like, like the black community or black folks in general, the majority of black folks, however you wanna answer the question, really understand um, what's happening to them? In a way, yes. I think if you ask the average person about the things that uh, impact us all, they could probably, most of them would talk about the things we've mentioned thus far. What's missing is the radical solution. I think most people are still devoted to reformism. 
to uh, uh, liberalism with the small mm. L. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you just vote, if you pass this law, if you have a lawsuit, if you do these things, which I'm not saying people should not do, or as individuals, the pressure on the individual. Well, if you just saved your money, you'd be better off. If uh, you know, it's your some somebody's there. It's their own fault. They haven't done better in life. Uh, so people acknowledge the oppression, but the tools to fight it are things that are forbidden to talk about. And um, I'm going to say maybe 50 years ago, during the liberation movement, um, the movement was crushed. So the people talking about the radical and necessary solutions are political prisoners mm -hmm. or others were co-opted. So when people had this language, uh, to really to talk about uh, connecting all of those things, connecting the domestic with the international, um, all of all of that is gone, and especially the co-opting and um, the um, ability of a small number of black people to quote unquote succeed, uh, a black CEO, the first black. Joint yeah. Chiefs of Staff, the first Black Secretary of State, first Black President. Right. Um, all of those things are very, very problematic because we then we go way, way back to the Black face in the high place, which is a yeah. legacy of Jim Crow. So we go forward and then we go back, but we went back because that was a plan.